Hey Explorers, I'm Jay. And I'm Patrick. And we're at the seaside town of Cambria, California, exploring everything that it has to offer. So follow us on this adventure of this beautiful town. Cambria has all kinds of historic homes and buildings dating back from the 1800s. Take for example the Cinnabar Gifts and Home Decor Building. Well, it was built in 1890 as a blacksmith shop. That's before my mom's 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 mom was born. Something like that. 1876. What is it now? I love this town. I know it's a, it's a little town. It's it's a quiet village and I think every day is probably like the one before. Where's the best place to start when wanting to learn about the history of a city? Why, the historical museum of course. And here we are. Let's check it out. This house was built in 1869. It was a family of six. They lived in this one small room with two small bedrooms and the kitchen and the bathroom were outside. In 1882, that gentleman, Mr. Franklin, we, he added the two bedrooms in the parlor, which actually doubled the size of the house. In 1949, when the Bianchini family passed away, the house went into probate. The family fought over it for 50 years. We do believe it's the longest probate in California, but we don't swear to that. When it went up for sale, when the judge said you finally have to sell a house and do something with it, they were going to tear it down and put a parking lot in here. And the historical society stepped up and said, no, you're not going to do that. So we purchased the house in the year 2000 for $500,000, which included a lot of land. The house was in a the main section of town. This room that we're standing in now was made of pine slabs, the, the main part, and the bottom redwood we were able to salvage. But Cambria used to be called Slab Town because all the homes were made out of pine slab. And over here we saved a piece of the pine to show you what the pine would have looked like on the house. When we took the mantle down, we found a little piece of wallpaper. The tiles are all original also, they're a Japanese motif. The, um, when we found the wallpaper, we sent this little tiny piece up to San Francisco, and we found a place that would replicate it, and they did an absolutely gorgeous job. And this is how they used to hang wallpaper. They would put the muslin down first, and then they would put the paper on the muslin, and it actually served two purposes because Single pine slab was very windy and it helped keep the wind out and keep the room a little warmer. If you look at the windows, they were um, made how they would have been made in the late 1800s. Wavy. We found a place that made the glass just like it would have been made back then. Uh, that's how they, they didn't have the, do you see it? Yeah. It's wavy yeah, right. and has glops in it. That's how the glass was made, and we wanted to be super authentic, so we had it done. One of the panes is original, but they can't tell us which one it was because they don't remember. Uh -huh. I wish they would have. That would have been interesting. And then the medallions in the ceilings were not for good looks. They were actually to help prevent the ceilings from falling down. Um, when you pull the lamp up and down, to put the oil in or to light it. And it also collected some of the soot inside there, so it made it a little bit easier to uh, clean the ceiling.
songs are any better. No, I don't. <laughs> Come on, he has to stop singing that song. Also, I have no idea what's on first. And you can't control the volume in either one of these. Oh. So uh, it is what it is. Speed Bridge up on, on the other end of the highway, one up more toward Carmel. Uh, it was proposed in 1894 and the first car went through in 1934. That's still one of the engineering marvels of the world. Nothing happened to that ever. None of the rain bothered it, none of the earthquakes bothered it, all the new bridges fell down all mm -hmm. <laughs> and cracked and they had to be replaced. And but that one, nothing has ever happened to that. He designed it in such a way it's just really miraculous because uh, it can actually slide or something. It's amazing for, you know, the 19, early 1900s. Now, this is very interesting. Two weeks after Pearl Harbor, the SS Montebello was a tanker and it was sunk right here off our coast of right here, Cambria. Uh, it's still down there. All of the people got ashore safely. That's one of the oars. Uh, but the Japanese were very active up and down our coast and they didn't want us to know so this building behind me is the old Cambria filling station, service station, that uh, was opened in, in the 1920s and was an active gas station until about 40 years ago. The woman who owns the bead shop inside now actually remembers coming to this service station back in the day and filling her car. So. It's really cool uh, where the plants are now up in the front over here. That's where the pumps used to be, but uh, it's cool to see this building being reused and uh, still in existence with the new life. And blaster so to keep the bubble formation and clean, trying to clean out the the grease that was there. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a sand bar and So we just came out of the shop, and Jay, what'd you end up finding? I found a rock. A I, rock? $140 rock. <laughs> How much? $140 rock. <laughs> and then we have Lynn's, home of the world famous Olali Berry. Oh my gosh. I want one of everything in this display case, maybe two. But where is the Olala? Oh, there it is. Olala berry cream cheese cake. That sounds so amazing. They have Olala berry everything from grilling glazes to preserves to toppings. I got one of these. Preserves? And even wine. What? This place has antiques. Antiques, antiques everywhere. What will we find in here? This place has everything. Including Beatles magazines. And pieces from the Royal Dalton collection. It's laser disc. Down from Cambria is San Simeon. And while in San Simeon, be sure you hit the beaches. But, warning. <laughs> so if you don't want to spend 150 bucks on a rock 
then you can head down to the beach and at low tide you may be able to catch something that interests you so like jay how much is this rock worth that rock is worth 150 dollars what i'm going to the bank what about this one that one is worth a hundred and fifty dollars what this one that one's worth five dollars oh next up on this tour is an elephant seal viewing party let's go So these guys can weigh up to 5,000 pounds and their torpedo shaped bodies actually reduce the drag in the water so that their thick blubber insulates them from icy water. It's kind of pretty cool, um, no pun intended, but aren't they crazy? Do you hear them screaming out there? That's like me and my little sister when we were kids. I think that's called domestic violence. Did this guy follow us all the way from Tucson? Well, the sun's about to set and I'm here at Moonstone Beach in Cambria, California. It's so beautiful and relaxing. Waves in the background. Oh boy, this place is incredible. Okay, so we don't typically include um, information about where we stay and stuff, but this time while we were in Cambria, we stayed at the Bluebird Inn. The main building of the Bluebird Inn was built by George Lull in 1870 as a house for his second wife, Mary. In 1899, after George passed away, Mary decided to sell the house. The new owner, also named Mary, turn the house into a rooming house. In the 1930s, the property was sold again, and the new owners decided to expand the business by adding cabins behind the main house. So, right now I'm standing here in the gardens uh, behind the Bluebird Inn. And it is so peaceful back here. I mean, there's old chairs and benches along the paths out here that you're able to sit and just relax and listen to the creek as it washes by. It's so beautiful and just a great little space to be able to reflect and, and just chill. In 1945, they added even more cabins, and this is when they started calling it a motel. In the 1950s, it was sold again, and the new owners thoroughly improved it. They modernized the cabins, and they added new motel rooms, as well as an office and a lounge. Too bad that lounge isn't around anymore. Since then, the property buildings have pretty much stayed the same, although upgraded multiple times and gone through many more owners. And in spite of this long string of owners, it is believed to many that the ghost of Mary, the original owner, still resides at the Bluebird Inn and is often seen roaming the motel late at night. So we hope you enjoyed this visit to the beautiful city of Cambria, California. For more information about any of the locations that we visited, click on the links below. And remember to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel and feel free to comment on the videos below. We hope you join us on our next adventure where we don't just travel, we, we explore. explore. See you next time. Bye.
ございます。